Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome back to Mythgard in Middle-earth. Uh, I'm Corey Olson, the Tolkien professor here with you as always on Friday afternoons. And with me as always is Grifflet, who I see is is uh, enjoying the view uh, with his new friend uh, Hadroneth here, or Hadroneth. Um, and we're looking out over the falls of Nimmerdale. It is a lovely view, Grifflet. Uh, looking down here, there's our statue of Nimmerdell we were looking at before in the falls of Nimmerdell that uh, that uh, that now bear her name. Uh, and she used to live in a flat quite near to here, right? So I sort of you sort of one can't help but wonder, is this meant to be actually Nimmerdell's flat that we're on right now? I mean, it's Haldir's flat now. It's been it's been like commandeered by the watch, right? Which seems a little bit sad if it were. But I no, I think uh, anyway. But here we are, right near Nimmerdell. Um, and uh, I love being up in the branches um, with the, 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 the golden roof uh, above you. It's uh, uh, you know, the way that you're just surrounded by the canopy of the Malorn here is really nifty. Um, and this windscreen, <clears throat> I love the windscreen, right? We're, uh, we're told that there's a windscreen that can, that, that, that there's, uh, that's in the book. All right. In the, in the description of the talent, the hobbits are taken up to sleep on. And, you know, there's a screen that can be moved uh, to shelter from the wind, whichever direction the wind is coming from. Um, but I have to admit that both flat and um, and windscreen are way bigger uh, than uh, I pictured them. But again, it's another one of those things where I think, uh, you know, they've made the choice in the game to make it bigger and grander so that it strikes you as as cool or if they were. I think the the flat that's actually described seems to be in the book, probably not much bigger than this inner circle in here, right? I mean, it's fairly cozy up there with the four hobbits, um, so it's clearly not all this space. Remember that, uh, uh, you know, uh, is it Pippin or Mary? I'm forgetting which. One of them is all worried about rolling off, right? Um, and uh, remember Sam's um, Sam's sort of rebuke, right? Um, uh, that uh, once he once once he drops off, he'll go on sleeping whether he rolls off or not, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, you know and, uh, and 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 the less said, the sooner uh, you know he'll get to the uh, you know to the to the to the, to the dropping off part. Um, so anyway, it's um, it's it's pretty clear if they were sleeping in here on this flat you know, like 15 feet from the edge, they wouldn't have been thinking that, right? They were, they were, they were sleeping pretty close to the edge with only the screen in between them and the cliff. So, so yeah, I'm thinking this, even this inner circle is probably bigger than the flat that was actually described by Tolkien in the book, but it's a pretty common pattern as we've talked about before. Um, and I think it's, it's another really interesting example of one of the challenges of doing a visual adaptation of Tolkien's works if they were to render it in the game exactly as the flit was described, it would look silly um, and certainly anticlimactic. So I understand why they did what they did. And it's cool. It's nice. I like it. <clears throat> anyway, off we go. So um, I need to go to Karen Emroth. Uh, I'm still wearing my fancy outfit because this is a big deal. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so we're going to go to Karen Amroth today, uh, the heart of Elvendom on Earth. I mean, that's kind of a thing, right? Getting to go to getting to visit the heart of Elvendom on Earth. Um, but um, I, first, I got to make a stop uh, because I found that uh, poor Griffith's inventory bags are still really full and he needs to reforge his legendary weapon now. So we're going to stop at the camp up here first and then we'll head over to Karen Amroth and uh, carry on with the epic quest line. But uh, I don't even think I don't even think Grifflet has visited this camp across the way. He's been to you know to to Orofin over there, but not to uh, not to the camp. Oop. Oh, we're swimming. Sorry. Thought I could ford there. Ended up swimming. No big deal. All right. Um, okay. Good. Let me get. I forgot to set up my things, make sure I'm getting everybody's, uh, uh, make sure I get everybody's lore questions and things, if you have lore questions. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, skirmish camp. The skirmish camp banner always 
gets me. I think what what uh, fools me about it every time is that is how ragged it is, because it's the only good guys banner that I recall seeing in the game, which is all raggedy like that. Almost the only banners that you um, see that are all raggedy like that are orc banners, right? A lot of the orc and goblin banners are all tattered and stuff like that, as if they don't really, you know, care for their symbols or standards themselves, right? Um, uh, which seems to me to work. But, um, and even also the the bottom here, right? The way in which these stakes, these pointy stakes are bound together, that also, I mean, so if this were a different symbol, I, this would look like, the only thing that it's missing is skulls, right? To be, to be, to be just like an orc banner. Um, and maybe splashes of blood or something, but still, like, if it had skulls, it would look exactly like one of the orc goblin banners. Um, so whenever I pass a skirmish camp, I'm always, I just always do a double take. I'm like, an orc camp? Oh, no, it's not an orc camp. Okay, it's fine. Um, but I mean, think about it. Are, am I forgetting anything? Are there, um, are there good guy banners in the game that look like this? That I've forgotten. I mean, remember even the, even the banners of Moria, like the ancient banners of the House of Durin that have been there since before the fall of, uh, uh, b since b you know before the fall of Durin and the rise of Durin's bane, are in better shape than these banners, <laughs> right? So it's one thing to be like, oh, the skirmish, you know, the the skirmish camps, you know, that those are these are like serious soldiers who have been, you know, been through it, you know, and they've, uh, they, I mean, sure, yeah, you can you can say that. Um, but, uh, and can I say that's the most listless Megovanen I've ever received, Laborwin? I mean, seriously, like, Megovanen. Anyway, um, but, uh, but still, like, they could take better care of their banners than that. There's really no excuse. Okay, so here we are, and I need to, I need to, I need to do some business here. Um, uh, yeah, you, I need to reforge my sword here. Yeah, I'm what totally... Let's do that. Reforge, please. Okay, what do we got? Coup de grace damage. Uh, riddle range. Let's go with that. Okay. Okay, yeah. Good. And other things to reforge. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is my actual active weapon, I think. Um, right? I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah. A blue one. Okay, good. Um... Let's see. Subtle stab damage multiplier. Oh, yeah. Up to rank rank five. Sweet. Yeah. Let's get that one in rank five. Now it's up to rank six. That's, that's excellent. Okay. And, hey, I got some other burglar things. We can identify while we're at it. Good, good. Can't get those yet. Not high enough level for those yet. But, oh, it's my inventory just out of control so let's find somebody that i can sell some stuff to i know this is gripping What's gripping stuff here uh, i'm just doing some maintenance here happy to uh to talk about lore thing well actually let me talk about current events instead so uh you guys got to see the stream that i did with chris pearson and mike drought that was fun right um now i know that several of you are wanting to ooh. Sorry, that one's new. Hang on, let me let me replace that. So I gotta upgrade some of my equipment here too. Where is it? I still got my cosmetics in here, which is bad. Uh, this one, right? Gwathnor's End. That's right. Yeah, I just got that one last time from killing that enormous monster all by myself. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, make it so. Yeah. Do that. Okay. Good. Good. Anyway, so that was fun, right? Uh, and you know, and that was the one. Several of you have heard me kind of announce that before and then sort of take it back it's been uh, it's we've been trying to get that together we've had to we've scheduled and canceled that i think three times and several times you know very much at the last minute um so uh uh anyway it's um it's was very exciting that that finally came together and i was uh, i was very glad uh that we got to do that so um anyway yeah it's uh Okay, let's see if we got that. All right. A bunch of those are cosmetics, which I really should get rid of. 
Actually, I'm going to sell some of my extra. Greetings. I really don't need all this crafting stuff. My other alts won't miss it. Um, I just got to make some room here. Okay, so um, so yeah, it was totally worth the wait. Um, I uh, I love how. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sworn to secrecy, of course, everything I saw while I was there. And actually, my visit was relatively brief this time to the turbine offices, so I didn't, uh, um, I didn't actually uh, get to, to get to see all that much uh, while I was there. So I don't have quite as many things that I shouldn't be talking about to talk about this time, um, which not I'm always discreet, of course. But, uh, but anyway... Um, I, I, it's hard. It's easier for me to be discreet because I didn't see as much. Um, but I love, uh, I, I lo you know, I'm so excited to see the plans for Mordor. Um, and in particular, thinking about the, thinking about the, the, the plot, right? That is, I'm interested to see what they do with Mordor. There's so much in Mordor, uh, for them to, uh, for them to try to tackle. Um, one of the things that was, we were, as we were discussing, um, you know, in, in our in our discussion during the stream, you know, as as Mike was joking, the only, the play, the narrative goes out of its way to just go to the places in Mordor where nobody is, right? But there's lots of places in Mordor other than the places where there aren't any people. Um, so, you know, there's so much that could be explored and examined. But the big question, so even bigger than what's going to be there and how are they going to how are they going to uh, um, uh, how are they going to depict it? But rather, how are they going to do the narrative, right? I mean, I'm assuming, based on the fact that they already burned the bridge to Morgul Vale, right, that means you're not going to be able to go through Morgul Vale. So you're not going to be able to go to the stairs of Kirith Ungol from that side, right? You're not going to be able to approach that from the west. I'll be very surprised if you can't get up to Kirith Ungol from the east side, eventually. Um, but... Um, Anyway, yeah, Sam is teasing me for being able to keep secrets. I am so discreet. I absolutely, like, I can keep secrets uh, like anything. Um, but, um, yeah, so anyhow, uh, it's, it's um, uh, I think they're going to have to do, and again, here, I'm not reviewing anything. We didn't even talk. I, I didn't press because I, I, I know I know that Chris isn't allowed to talk about it and I don't want to get anybody in trouble. So I didn't ask. So this is all purely my own speculation. I got to think you got to go in through the Black Gate, right? I mean, they've the, 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 the plot line, and again, I've not played it myself yet as I'm not at level cap, but um, the, the, the storyline, the epic line is following the March of the Captains, right, to the Black Gate. So... You've got to think you've got to go in there that way. And there's plenty of opportunity to enter into Mordor, right? That is to, uh, you know, to go through the Black Gate. We know that after the narrative in the book, you know, we're, we're, we're in the battle before the Black Gate. And then the narrative follows briefly. It gets fragmented at that time, um, but it follows... Gandalf, right, with the eagles going to rescue Merry and Pippin and then it, or Merry and Pippin going to rescue Frodo and Sam. Um, Merry's already back in town and Pippin's under a troll, so he needs rescuing too, but not by Gandalf and an eagle. Anyhow, um, as, you know, so the, the narrative follows the rescuing of Frodo and Sam and then re resumes when Frodo and Sam wake up after being unconscious for a few weeks. So there's no, uh, you know, but we do learn, we are told that Aragorn has entered into Mordor and conquered it. So he goes in and he, he subdues the place and conquers it. Um, I think that um, most likely that, that that's the narrative they have to follow, right? So the player characters on the epic line will have to be going in with Aragorn, right, through the Black Gate. And then that gives you the opportunity to explore Mordor from the, you know, from the northwest corner on down. Um, now, the problem, of course, is it doesn't give you a chance to see Mordor prior to the fall of Sauron, because Sauron has already fallen when the Black Gate opens, or you know, when, the, when, when, the, when the Black Gate crumbles. Uh, so you'd only be seeing Mordor in, dis in disarray, right, and in the process of being conquered and, and, uh, uh, and surrendered. But, um, but anyway, I, I, I think that um, uh, they... Um, they can still do a lot with, uh, like, you know, instances and session plays and things. 
you know, like hearing, you know, the, the technique that they've done so many times in the epic story of like, you're going to hear the story, you know, go to somebody to hear the story of this or that, right? And then, you know, so then that leads you to the instance, right, or the session play. Um, but I don't know. I'll be very interested to see. Uh, you know, they've shown great ingenuity so far in how they've handled the narrative. It's a very difficult thing to do, not only to follow the narrative of the book, but also to add in all the extra stuff that they want to add in and to follow all the characters that they have made into a big deal. Uh, it's really neat. So anyway, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Jesse was thinking the same thing with uh, uh, and, 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 and K.O. and Cloud there. Um, session play and instances. I, I, I think that's got to be how they're going to end up doing it because there, there doesn't really seem to be any way that again the, the the hard thing is that we can't do with our pcs what the book does right that is shift back to frodo and sam meanwhile right let's go along now with frodo and sam as we go on the last stages into mortar we can't do that so as much as i would like to follow right behind Frodo and Sam up the stairs of Kirith Ungol and through Shelob's lair and, and into the tower of Kirith Ungol and then follow their steps down, for, you know, again, you know, all, all the way towards Mount Doom. I'd love to be able to do that. And I suspect, my suspicion is we will be able to do that um, from the other side, right? That that, that that terrain will all be there and the evidence of their passage. I'm going to be very, very disappointed disappointed indeed if I can't find, like, the cast-off chainmail shirt and uh, Sam's pots. If I can't find... There better be Sam's pants, right? I should be able to see... In fact, if the people at Turbine really love me, there will be a quest to retrieve Sam's pans and give them back to him, right? That's what I... Talk about wish fulfillment quests, right? My wish fulfillment quest would be to recover poor Sam's pans, the, the dropping of which was a death knell to his heart, right? Uh, and to be able to retrieve... Just like I, we helped Bill... Right after uh, after he separated from the party before Moria, um, I, I I so want to have a quest to go searching for Sam's pans so that we can surprise Sam with his with a with, with a reunion with his pans uh, when he wakes up in the field of Cormallon. Um I absolutely I absolutely think that that's um, that's that's I uh, I really hope that that happens. So anyway, okay, um, let's. Um, Let's, let's, no, not his pants, Druid's fire, though he would have pants, right? I mean, he got, didn't he get some orc pants uh, that they cast off? So, you know, it's all good. Well, he, had, he had an elf cloak, but did, don't I, I, I have a vague memory when he gets the orc gear for Frodo in the Tower of Kirith Ungol that, um, that he, uh, that he, that there was a pair of orc pants that got cast off. So it's totally, it's totally there. His pants, his pants. Um, Okay. All right. Anyway. All right. Now we got that. Wait. What new? No, what new deed did I get? Oh, right. Finding this spot. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, let's get moving. Uh, because in the meantime, we're a long way from Mordor still, Grifflet. Uh, but you've got some exciting things to do. Namely, going to Karen Emroth. Now, uh, this is orange to you. What kind of? Do, do, any interesting quests here? Let's talk to the quest givers here in the camp. Like, there's this dwarf. What's this dwarf doing here? Come and stay a moment. Decreased reputation with the Galothrim, huh? Um, I'm permitted beyond the borders of the wood. Yeah. Um, uh oh. The elves that live in the wood have very strict rules concerning what animals they hunt. The meat and hides of these animals are said to be extremely high quality. Oh, I don't think so, man. I'm not going to go poaching in Lothlorien. Are you insane? No way, man. No way, man. I I'm not even tempted. You know, you know, Asmund, it's, 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 it's people like you what give dwarves a bad name. Let's go talk to these elves. I won't, I won't rat you out, we man, but I'm just so not doing that. Okay, okay. Um, orcs have been trying to enter the Golden Wood for the past several days. Collect orc filth. Oh, that sounds like fun. Um, oh, nice. A quote, see, any quest that is a, that has, whose title is a quotation from the book, is a quest that I'm going to be tempted to get, right? Uh, curse their foul feet. That, of course, is a line from Haldir uh, when the orcs cross uh, Nimrodel, right? And he curse their foul feet in its clean water, he says. Um, the orcs have been trying to enter the Golden Wood. 
And though they are killed by the arrows of the Goathrim before they get very far, still there is grievous damage done. Curse the foul feet of the orcs. Their passage across the swift-flowing Nimmerdale has dirtied its clean waters. The encrusted filth of their boots collects on the banks of the stream. So we're going to literalize the foul feet. Uh, so the actual filth. Does this mean that the feet of the orcs is actually clean so that the orcs have cleansed feet? Because that would be awesome. Um, maybe, maybe, uh, who is it, uh, Dindirith? Maybe, Dindirith, we should be looking at the bright side of this. That, yes, on the one hand, they're apparently leaving encrusted filth uh, on the banks of the stream, but, but perhaps they are themselves being cleansed by this. Uh, maybe, maybe. Um, anyway, the Song of Nimmerdale has made the more sorrowful for it. Maybe, is it, is, it, um, is it distracting from the perfect iambic meter of the Song of Nimmerdale? That would be sad. Um, travel north and south along the stream and collect the... F okay, I, I, I can't not do this quest. I absolutely can't possibly not do this quest. That sounds awesome. And how about you? Three lied, Ron, dear. Stay a moment and speak with me. Okay. Um, recover arrows from orc corpses. Wow, you guys both have really glamorous quests. Clean up the, clean up the filth and retrieve your arrows? Okay. I like the fact that I'm not being asked to defend the borders, right? As if they needed help defending the borders. Um, but okay. All right. I guess if Griffith is going to do paralegal work for the, uh, for the Dunedain in Areg in not Aregian, in Evendim, uh, he can do janitorial work for the elves of Lothlorien. That would be great, actually. Hey, Kiriana, good to see you. Um, we're going to head off. I'm going to actually mount because that would be faster on account of horses being faster than hobbits running on foot. So let's do that. Um, oh, there's filth right here. Oh, man. Boy, the fi boy, the orc filth starts at home here, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> it's too... It's really too bad. This... Uh, these quests, there should be a title. Shouldn't there be a title attached to them? You know, like Janitor to Lothlorien or something, right? Okay, where do we have to? Are we? Am I? Am I? Am I done? Over, okay, no, I gotta go. For, I gotta go. I can go further down here. Is there more filth? Okay, I'll keep looking for filth and corpses, right? Because I got corpses up here too, right? That's. Oh, so we're we're celebrating the oh, oh look it's 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 Orofin. Hey Orofin. What's up? Yeah, did you you shot some orcs, didn't you? Do you do you help getting their arrows getting your arrows back? Cause that's what I'm here for. I'm taking out the trash. I'm um I'm oh there's some more filth. Ah, the opportunity to say there's some more filth and go running over towards it. Okay, here we are. Orc filth, we can't have that. Oh, this is awesome. This is just awesome. What a noble action I am performing. Collected orc filth from the banks of the Nimrodel. Collected, see, is an interesting word to be using in this context. Are there arrows up here? Uh... No, but there's more filth, apparently, up this way. How can there be more? Oh, oh, oh there's an orc corpse. There we are. Okay. I should go down to the river to look for the filth, because it's the river what washes the filth away. Oh, there's some. Okay. All right. I think this will this will this will do it for orc filth. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> okay, Sam. Now I'm ashamed that I didn't make that joke first. There's some lovely filth down here. Yeah, uh, I'm I I am covered in shame, Sam. Such an obvious Monty Python connection that I missed. I am I am. I am rebuked. I am cast down. 
Oh, hang on. There we go. There's another orc corpse up here, and then I'll head back south looking for more orc corpses. Okay. No job. No job that serves the people of Lothlorien is too menial for Griflet. No way. He is just happy to serve in the most humble of capacities. Okay, I already got the uh, arrow out of that corpse, apparently. So do I need to recross the river? Yeah, I guess I do. I love sw swimming among the Malorn leaves. Oh, look, there's another corpse. I missed that one. Is this an Ayat? No, this is clearly not an Ayat. Right. Um, did I ever tell you the Ayat story? So the Ayat is a word that Tolkien uses to describe um, a little bit of island in uh, uh, in the uh, Anduin during their during as you know when the, when the company is coming down. And there's a funny story behind the, uh, Tolkien's use of the word Ayat E Y E O T. Um, uh, I forget the name of the critic, um, but but of course um, there were lots of people who hated the Lord of the Rings when it came out, um, especially like literature people, um, you know, modern literature people. Uh, nobody hates Tolkien more than like modernists. Um, but anyway, um, so. Lots of, uh, you know, sort of literary snobs um, hated The Lord of the Rings. And one of the things that they kept complaining about was Tolkien's style. They're like, it's so stilted and artificial. But and, and the thing is, is that most of them just are are actually really kind of in somewhat comical ignorance of what Tolkien is actually doing. And there are many places where they really kind of betray their own ignorance um, in some of the observations that they make. For instance, um, when, uh, you know, one example is Tolkien's use of the word low, L-O exclamation point, right? And it's, it's, it's an example that several critics used where they're like, look, how artif how stilted is that, right? I mean, like, who says low anymore? Well, the only people who would say low are somebody who's like trying to create this like stupid veneer of like, uh, uh, you know, ancient language, like it's, it's, you know, trying to sound all like King James Bible and Shakespeare-ish, right? Um, and that's, where are the orc corpses? Aren't they supposed to be orc? Excuse me, Forrest Buck, have you seen any orc corpses around here? There's meant to be an orc corpse with an arrow. I think I only need the one. Somewhere around here. Maybe we should go back towards the river. Anyway, so so they, they cited this as like an obvious example of like pure affectation on Tolkien's part. You know, that he just, um, he just, you know, included that obvious, that like to a modern, to a modern ear, just ridiculous affectation. Um, but of course, it's not true. Tolkien's use of that word um, is very, f you know, again, they were showing their ignorance, very far from trying to imitate Shakespeare or to imitate, um, uh, to imitate the King James Bible or something like that, what he was doing was translating Anglo-Saxon because, of course, you'll notice when that word is used, it is very often, it is used most often when he's talking about the Rohirrim. And he, as we know from his Beowulf translation, the word low is the modern English word that he uses to translate the Anglo-Saxon expression what the first word of Beowulf. Um, low is how he renders it when he does a modern translation of Anglo-Saxon. Um, and that's what he's doing in the narrative. He is, do he is not trying to imitate the Bible or something like that. He is deliberately emulating Anglo-Saxon style. style. Um, so he, the narrative that he uses about the, you know, the Anglo-Saxon-ish peoples uh, in his book, he not only has them speak in alliterative verse and stuff like that, um, but his own narrative style itself imitates the narrative style of a narrative poet uh, in Anglo-Saxon. Uh, so like what he's doing is now like, that doesn't mean that they're obligated, the critics are obligated to like it, right? I mean, they can dislike it if they want to, um, but 
the kind of assumptions that they made about it, the kind of arguments that they tried to build on his usage, um, just end up, again, kind of sort of betraying their own ignorance. Well, Ayat was the same way. Um, one of his very outspoken uh, critics at the beginning, right after The Lord of the Rings was published, um, was again complaining about his prose and his style. And uh, one of the things that she sig uh, singled out, oh, there he is. Hey, uh, did you be grateful we didn't hinder your crossing of the Nimmerdale? Okay. Yeah, no, I'm grateful. Um, in fact, I'm so grateful I'm going to return your arrow. You probably killed this orc over here, right? But And he's got an arrow stuck in him. And I would return it to you, except i got to return it to that other person. But it'll probably get back to you. Don't worry about it. Um, collected slightly used uh, uh, elf arrows. Slightly used. Sounds like a classified ad. Anyway, um, okay, so this critic was trying to illustrate what it was that just you know, uh, uh, annoyed her so much about Tolkien's style. And she, uh, she quoted, a, she, and she quoted his use of the word ayat. And she's like, look, this is a, this is a classic example of the evils of Tolkien's style. He is, he is hunting for obscure and archaic sounding words, which he totally doesn't need to use, right? So like, it's an island, right? Just call it an island, dude, uh, instead of being like, it's an ayat, right? Um, and so she was making fun of him for using that word. But Tolkien, in fact, was not just searching for, he was not just using his thesaurus or something. Um, he attached a specific definition to that word. In fact, as a philologist, he had always been curious about the word ayat. And he was, and his, the conclusions that he had come to from the use of the word ayat in older writing was that it's not just a synonym. There's a there's a specific meaning. Like an ayat is like a subclassification of island, right? But it's nobody really agrees exactly what it what it meant. So he decided that an ayat. Welcome to the golden wood. Well, that's a little more. Th uh, so so you're you're more. Uh, oh, you're not the filth one. I thought you were more welcoming when I come bearing filth. But uh, anyway, um, when he so so he decided that an ayat should be an island which is sometimes covered by, sometimes revealed and sometimes covered by the water, right? So like an island that goes underwater at high tide, for instance, uh, would be, would be an ayat. Um, so an island which is not permanent in that sense, uh, which is sometimes during, 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 during high tide or during a flood season or something like that. If it, if it goes, if it's underwater at that time, but it's above water at other times or most of the time, that's, that's what he decided the word ayat meant. So when he used the word ayat, he wasn't just reaching for synonyms. He was making a technical description. This is that kind of island. Um, and if you know that, then it gives you a clearer sense. It's that island that they uh, camp on. If I'm remembering correctly, um, the ayat in the Anduin is where they're camping that night when they hear Gollum. Remember when Frodo and, and, uh, uh, and Aragorn have that conversation about Gollum? Um, that's on the ayat. And so it sort of shows them how it shows you how makeshift their camp is. They're not on like a big island in the middle, right? They're on this little ayat, um, which is uh, which is very low down uh, to the level of the river because it will go underwater if the river uh, if the river rises, um, you know, due to due to, to you know to rain or snow melt or something like that. Um, of course, the Anduin wouldn't be tidal all the way back there, I wouldn't think. Um, but anyway. Uh, so anyway, that's my that's my ayat story, which was all inspired by my finding that orc corpse on that island in the middle of the of of the Nimrodel and saying, it's not an ayat, <laughs> right? It's okay. All right, very good. Um, all right. So um, uh, yeah, Sam says it sounds similar to the criticism of Lovecraft's use of old words. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Sam, there are a lot of people who are just very intolerant of that kind of that kind of diction basically. Um, the elf arrow that kills more than one orc is a lucky arrow indeed. Okay, all right, I've returned your five lucky Welcome arrows. May I have a word with you? Oh, let's see. The arrows you brought will have a second chance. Hooray! But their chance will come nearer to the entrance of Moria, from which the orcs pour into Nanduhirian. Right, uh, which is, of course, the Elvish name for Azanul Bazaar or Dimril Dale. Um, you'll notice how often in this area things are given all three names, what the dwarves call it, what the elves call it, what the humans call it, right? 
um, we get the three names of the three mountains of Moria, for instance, right? And we get the three names of the valley. Okay, my friend uh, Merithrandir, right? We met Merithrandir, uh, journeyed uh, to Mechem Bizru. Yep, we met him. That just came from that outpost, in fact. He'll be able to make... Oh, so I should bring them up there. Okay, right. So pick up the bundle, right, and bring them up there. Okay. All right. Why are you talking to me like I've never been there? Of course I've been there. Does anybody come to you, Kelleguian, uh, uh, who does not come from that direction? Servants of the enemy cannot pass the bounds of Lorien. <laughs> Just a matter-of-fact statement. Servants of the enemy cannot. Okay, here, FYI. Okay, curse the foul feet of the orcs. I've done well to cleanse the banks of Nimrodel, though as long as the orcs march toward the Golden Wood, that beautiful stream will be endangered by their filthily careless footsteps. Uh, yeah, we need to we need to put a stop to this. Let us return the filth. Oh yes, let's do that. And speak with me. Oh, that doesn't sound petty at all. Okay, we'll show the orcs that the elves of Lorien will not tolerate their presence here. Yeah, bring the orc filth. Oh, this is awesome. Bring the orc filth you scoured from the banks of Nimrodel to one of the fires in the orc camps of Nanduhirian and set it aflame. Okay, the reek of the burning will send a message to the orcs of Moria. No stain on these lands will be permitted from this day forth. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, that's much less petty. I thought you were going to, I thought he was going to tell me to like go, you know, like wipe it on the, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, Romans go home on the, on the wall. See, Sam, I, now I'm like with the Monty Python references, um, you know, to like, to, you know, write, write rude messages on the, on their palisades and stuff. But no, this is much better. Follow the road west and north into the Nanduhirian. Okay, right. Any of the camps? Okay. Return when I've dispersed. Uh, okay. All right. Oh, no, that is way too much fun not to do. We are absolutely doing that. Um, and that that's lovely. Uh, Dindirith. Yeah, so Dindirith, that is a, that this is a great plan, right? So we show, so this is, this accomplishes so many very worthwhile goals, right? On the one hand, we are uh, uh, returning the filth to their camp, right? To, uh, uh, you know, and getting it out of out of out of Nimmerdale. But by burning it, which will set up a fearful stench and a smoke, we're not only discouraging them from coming down here, but we are enacting for them an allegory of their own presence, right? So we're we're clearly communicating to them your uh your 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 aggressive and evil presence in this peaceful land is as the smoke and stench that arises from this fire. As you may believe that uh, you know your being here is fine, but we will we we will we will make apparent to you, right? We we, we shall make open that which is merely uh, that which which is merely implied or suggested uh, in your presence, and we will make it so that you yourselves cannot uh, cannot fail to. Um, uh, you know, to 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 observe for yourselves, you know, to to acknowledge that your presence is a stain upon this land. Love it. Love it. Just uh, the symbolic message. So powerful, Dindir. It's so appropriate. Excellent. Let's see. We'll have to go in and get a campfire. I guess. Let's see. I don't want to spend too much time in orc camps here. Because I do want to get to Karen Emroth today, because that's going to be fun. I mean, the heart of Elvendom on Earth, people, right? I, who doesn't want to go to the heart of Elvendom on Earth? So uh, we're going to get there. Let's go back up to our friend, the bearded obelisk over there. Because there we can stealth our way to some campfires without having to go through the palisades and everything else. Uh, oh, shoot, Druid's Fire, you're so right. I totally forgot the bundle of arrows. Oh, it's the elvish version of pie running, right? Okay, I'm sorry. Thanks for the reminder there. I, I, I did, I did forget that. I love seeing the top of Lothlorien from the hill here. Just seeing the, the Malorns. That's it's just that's fantastic. See, it was worth the second view. Uh, it was really that was really my excuse. Druid's fire. But thank you for reminding me. I did forget to pick up the arrows. I'm gonna have to run with them, presumably. Okay. 
I sorry I was so excited about the filth. Uh, you know, it's it's understandable, right? I mean, who wouldn't be all pumped up with the filth? And I still have the filth, right? Uh, uh, believe it or not, I guess Dindirith didn't actually take the filth from me um, before giving it back. Um, he was just like, no, actually, you keep it, right? Which makes sense in all kinds of levels. So, all right, we're going to... Um, we're going to head down past the forest bucks and does back to pick up the bundle of elf arrows. And that, of course, confirms me in my choice of the uh, going to that northernmost of the orc camps, because I'm going to have to presumably run my way like I'm carrying a hobbit pie, as you say, Druid's Fire, all the way back up to the camp. So sorry, sorry. Let me let me. Uh, let me come back here. <laughs> Rosybug is surprised I'm this happy about filth. But I, it's just, it's, oh, and that's a great quest, right? That is an awesome quest. I mean, it's not nearly as happy as, as you'll see me if, uh, if I get to return Sam's pans to him. Pans, not pants. Um, uh, the stalwart Sam Gamgee never, never lost his pants. All right. I want, to, I, want to, I want to see the bundle of arrows. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good job, Grifflet. You rest them right on your pot belly there. That'll, that'll do. Okay. Off we go. Better hustle. Da -dun, da -dun. Yeah, so there's, there's Druid's Fire just wa watched me run away with no arrows. Right. Okay. Yeah, you could tell. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't holding things out in front of me. Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the pans. So Jess, you didn't even know what I was talking about. His pans. Remember he has to when they're in the final in Mordor, in the final, you know, unloading uh you know, when he's he's getting rid of the last of the of the of the of the, the weight, right? To, to to reduce the weight as much as possible for their final uh trek towards Mount Doom. Uh, and he actually throws his cooking pans away, uh, and uh, he hears them c go clattering down. And he's uh, and, and I love his comment when Sam says, um, you know, and uh, and and he how he, he he doesn't want you know Gollum picked up the mail shirt that um, uh, that they that Frodo cast off before, and he doesn't want Frodo he doesn't want Gollum to add a sword to it, and he's like, and I won't have him messing with my pans, right? The idea that. Um, that image by itself, of course, is just wonderful. That there's Gollum stealthily following along behind. That he's going to come up where Sam has abandoned his cooking pans. And Gollum's going to be like, yes, the cooking pans, they're mine. Uh, it's fantastic. I just absolutely love that. Um, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Madman Model is assuring me that the so the filth quest is repeatable. Oh, so I could have the joy of the orc filth again and again and again. I mean, does life get better than that? Um, okay, okay. Also, oh, you've not gotten to that part of the books yet, Jesse. Well, okay. Um, I'm being waylaid by an orc waylayer. Yeah, no problem. You can't stop the delivery of the bundle of arrows, man. One of these arrows probably has your name on it, bub. Um, yeah, well, keep reading, Jesse. Keep reading. Actually, Jesse, you were reminding me. Um, you know what I've been thinking lately? Here's what I've been thinking. I've been thinking I want to do a new thing. Um, I've we've not yet arranged all the details. There's a, you know, a bunch of things that I need to kind of... Uh, uh, kind of sort of yeah, and no, Sam Gollum wouldn't need the pans. That's what's so funny about it, right? Gollum would not want the pans, but Sam's own love for his cooking pans uh, blinds him to the fact, you know, like he uh, that that the very image of Gollum coming up behind and even touching his pans, right, just bothers him. But I love how he does kind of implicitly attribute to Gollum a like uh, you know clandestine desire for possession of his pans. Um, uh, Anyway, uh, but, uh, but anyway, so but so Jesse, here's what I'm thinking. Um, I would like to do. Um, there's been lots of times when um, I've done um, 
you know, we do, I do lore talks and stuff all the time. And, you know, you guys have spent a lot of time just listening to me kind of go on about the books and stuff that Tolkien says or didn't say or whatever it is. Um, but um, what I haven't done, ever done yet, is like something more like a systematic discussion of the books. And I'm thinking that'd be really fun. You think that'd be fun? What, I, what, what I'm kind of thinking is, and I, here's another thing I'm thinking. I haven't taught the Lord of the Rings in years. I mean, I've been talking about the Lord of the Rings fairly regularly for a long time, but I haven't actually taught my way through the books since I last did them for the Mythgard Academy, which was the fall of 2013. So it's been almost three years now, three full calendar years since I've taught a class on the Lord of the Rings. Um, because the classes I've been teaching at Signum, uh, I've, I've taught like a class on Tolkien's poetry and, uh, and all that kind of, but I've not just like taught my way through the Lord of the Rings. Hey there. Yeah. I brought you the arrows. Hey, um, what brings you to Lorien? Wouldn't that be fun? So I'm thinking, wouldn't it be fun to kind of, to do a, a, a like a, a, an in-game slash Twitch stream, uh, discussion of the book, like go, go chapter by chapter through the Lord of the Rings and discuss our way through the books. And then of course we could also be thinking about the in-game connections and stuff. That would be, a. Uh, that would be, that would be fun, right? Wouldn't that be fun? We could take a, we could take a fair bit of time with it, right? Like maybe once a week, we're, I could, we'll read a chapter a week. Maybe I finish a whole chapter every week. Maybe we take more than one week on some chapters, right? Um, but again, to do a combination of just straight up discussion of the book and, um, and then also kind of in-game, in-game discussion. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, it's, uh, the new idea that's kind of kicking around my head here. Um, yeah. So, we'll see. I'd uh, be interested to see if you guys would be interested in that. Okay. Uh, I can tell these arrows have already slain an orc or two. Yeah. Okay. Um, your efforts will not be forgotten. That's good. Oh, I get to choose one. I want a relic. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Um, ooh. Ooh. Druids fired. Thank you. It's daylight. You are so right. Finally, it's not night when I'm in this camp. Look at that. Can I get out from under the trees? Come on, Grifflet. Because I want to get a top-down view here, Grifflet. So let's... There we go. Next to this bush over here. So we've got clouds in the sky, Right? So notice how you can still see the reflection of the clouds. It gives the impression of the stars being like in, they're deep in the water, right? Um, it's not just a reflection on the surface because you can see the surface reflection. We can see the clouds moving across the sky. And yet through or, and behind that, we can see uh, we can see the stars, right? Love that effect. Love that effect. Um, okay, so... Uh, uh, yeah, cool, cool, um, good. So I'm glad uh, I'm glad you guys are uh, you you guys are you guys sound like you're interested in doing the in doing the the book discussion streams. So I got a lot of logistics to work out, um, and uh, we'll see. You know, there's there's lots of stuff to talk about. I'm gonna I'm gonna run some ideas past the turbine folks and see what we could do. But uh, and uh, as I talk with them and we kind of sort things out more. Um, I, oh yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go. Go do the filth now. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. But I'm thinking. I'm. I'm thinking this is probably gonna happen. Uh, I think it's. It's. It's almost certainly gonna happen. Um, it will certainly. It would certainly be recorded. Um, first of all, it's gonna be open. It's not gonna be. A, it, it, it won't be something you'd have to really sign up for. Um, and it's something to be free to the public. And it would be. Um, uh, and it would be. It's like I'd be hosting it here on Twitch, either here on the Signum U channel, I'm not sure which, maybe the Signum channel, as it would kind of be a Signum program. But anyway, I'll be working out the details, and I'll get back with you with logistics and, and, and further thoughts as we get closer. But, um, but uh, just wanted to kind of float the idea. All right, these fires look like they already have a fair bit of stench attached to them.
All right, here we go. Dirty smoke fills the air. Oh yeah, that looks great. But as these uh, mobs are orange, I should probably not ignore them, right? I may just want to look about myself and do some combat here. Though it was a, that was lovely orange smoke. Okay, I got the sapper too. Do I get the defiler also? Or is that it? That's it. Okay. Oh, I've defeated 11 of 15 orcs. All I need is four more orcs to complete that orc quest. Well, we might as well do that. Might as well do that. I mean, while we're here, because then I can turn that into... Grifflet can carry on. Grifflet needs to get to level 58 so that we can do Filgashan, which remember we, uh, we're we going to do Filgashan as another follow-up to our fundraiser. Um, so I definitely want to get there. So we should, we should bestir ourselves and complete an extra quest here, I think. Then Karen Amroth, because again, heart of Elvendom on Earth, right? You know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, not gonna shortchange the heart of Elvendom on Earth. Come on, I'm trying to sneak up on you. Would you stand still and let me stab you in the back? Uh, okay, very good. Oh, you're only yellow anyway. Not even a challenging orange mob. Okay, two more. Find a couple other stragglers here on the outskirts. Oh, hey, Kiriana. Is there? Well, those guys could reach in. Here's one right there. Another way layer. Oh, oh, didn't see that coming, did you? Oh, Madman, you are completely correct. I forgot to pick his pocket. Oh, I'm being attacked. Look at that. Okay. I haven't picked anybody's pocket in a while. Griffith's getting rusty. Now I have to do that. Okay. Yes! Oh, I burgled an Athos uh, uh, essence from him. Sweet. Oh, that was my best burglar yet. My, be my best burgle yet. I mean, it's not as impressive as when I stole that guy's pants off right off him. I mean, that's a pretty legendary, pretty legendary action right there. Okay, it's oh, it's Rosquith. Yeah, I gotta. He was the one with the orc quest. Okay. I think I can get out of stealth and run like normal. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Oh, so see, Jesse, the, this discussion would be totally different from the Mythgard Academy one. The Mythgard Academy uh, discussion of the Lord of the Rings was really fun. Like, that was really great. But this is going to be different and in some ways even better because what this would be would be like that wasn't just chapter by chapter right uh, remember i did what did i do like six weeks on the fellowship of the ring which is, seems absurd in retrospect and then like eight or nine weeks maybe each on the, the the two towers and the return of the king no i'm talking at least one week per chapter right so this is a a reading of the lord of the rings that would go on obviously for more than a year maybe two years it might take to go through the whole thing um so it's going to be in that way it would be a lot more like my hobbit book where i went chapter by chapter through um so it'd be it'd be more like that plus it would give us a chance to explore in game connections and adaptation points as well so yeah yeah um okay 
The rabble has been thinned. Yeah, I did that almost accidentally, but it's a uh, new earring. Um, hmm. Yeah. Sure. That sounds great. I would be grateful for your assistance. Mm, you know, I'll take this in case I'm in the neighborhood, but I'm probably not going to be able to spend much time doing that rask with, really, i got to tell you. Um, okay, now where do I need to go? I need to go back to Dindirith. Tell him about the wonderful success of the filth quest. We lied to Malen. And then I'm going to head to Karen Amroth. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh... Cool. Cool. Yeah, Madman, if I can steal the shoes off a guy's feet while he's walking, that's... I don't know if that's more impressive than stealing his pants. I mean, it's less creepy, of course, than stealing his pants. Um, less, like, sort of morally questionable. But also less humiliating, right? I mean, the idea that you leave this orc behind you, you know, pants... You know, you just, like, pants an orc without his noticing is kind of fun. But, um... Uh, anyway, okay. Um... Uh, excellent. So, um, cool. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, because uh, I'm glad, I'm glad there's several of you who enjoyed the, the Mythgard Academy stuff. I, I, with, um, especially the, the class on the two towers and the return of the, the return of the ring, the class of the fellowship of the ring was actually recorded a heck of a long time ago. I mean, Summer of 2012, maybe? At the latest, that's when it was. In fact, I'm almost positive that is when it was. Summer of 2012. Um, and anyway, it's, uh, that, that, was, that, that, that was a really long time ago. And it was well after a year later that I came back and did the, the Two Towers and the Return of the King, in, uh, starting in October, November of, uh, of 2013. And I'll never forget the class on the choices of Master Samwise was one of those moments which happened not infrequently to me when I'm when I'm teaching, where I just I'm teaching the thing and I and at the end I'm just like Wow, what just happened here? You know, I mean I didn't I, I didn't really plan or think of that stuff. It it kind of um uh I was just kind of amazed as it happened, um, I learned so much about that, which has always been one of my favorite chapters. But uh, the choices of Master Samwise, I learned so much about that in that class. It was really, uh, it was really cool. Um, all right, so okay, Dindirith, that was awesome, right? So, so Dindirith, the symbolic effect was super cool because. Um, the filth as it burned and rose, it arose in this. I was kind of being attacked by several orange mobs at the time, so I didn't quite get to enjoy it as I as I, as I might have done. But in this huge, like reddish orange cloud, as if the as if the blood of their victims were staining the. the it was fantastic, Dindirith. Really Servants great effect. Of the enemy cannot pass the bounds of Lorien. Uh, I could smell the reek from here. Wasn't it awesome? Yeah, the orcs should know now that no offense against the land will go unanswered. Well, okay. It's not exactly that that was an answer. It was more like a revelation. It was that we're trying to push the orcs to some self-examination, right? You know, they sh the response should be for them to ask themselves, like, okay, you know, what am I really accomplishing with my life? You know, is... Do I want to be a mere stain upon the landscape? You know, a blot upon the countryside? Um, am I, in fact, like a malodorous smoke upon the wind? Uh, you know, it, right? Isn't that that kind of self-examination that we... Um, anyway, that's kind of what I had in mind, Dindirith. I think it would be pretty cool. And you'll give me another setting as well. So that sounds good. A shadow falls beyond the glory, against which we must be prepared. Oh, uh, the... Um, the way is this different? More orcs have crossed the Nimmerdale, leaving more filth. You know, I, I'm gonna pick up more filth again. Well, picking up filth was fun once. You want me to pick hey, up arrows again? Stranger. If you are rested, I have a request of you. 
tell you what, guys, I could really, I could do this all day. I mean, it never gets old picking up orcs and, uh, uh, I mean, orc uh, arrows, plucking, uh, plucking arrows out of bloody decaying orc corpses and uh, dredging up filth from the banks of rivers really doesn't get old. But, um, but when I ask myself, would I rather indulge myself in that a second time or would I rather go visit the heart of Elvendom on Earth? I say to myself, it's the heart of Elvendom on Earth that I want to see. Um, not to relive my old, the old glory days of my orc filth symbolic mission. So, yeah, uh, I, I know you told me it was repeatable, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize actually it would be instantly repeatable. But it's it's all good. I mean, you can't, you just can't, um, you can't scoop filth often enough. That's what I say. All right. Anyway, let's go. Let's enter Lothlorien. I've just, I've been, I've been just kind of flirting with the eaves of the golden wood here. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's go in. Hey there, man. Yeah, I won't cause trouble. I'm the janitor. You wonder at the lady for letting so many pass our borders. I know, right? Okay, here, I guess, um, I guess I'll mount. That is to say, I guess I'll mount, which means actually hitting the mount button. There we go. Okay. All right. Off to Karen Amroth. This is so exciting. Okay, so there's the bridge across the river. It's not going to make me cross on a rope, I guess. Which is kind of a shame. I have to say, that was a little bit of a disappointment. I didn't miss that, did I? There isn't a way that you can cross the river on ropes, is there? Because I would really love it if there were. Uh, I was a little bit... Dis I was looking for it. The first time I came to Lothlorien, I spent some time looking around. like, surely there must be an elf on the banks. Or like some kind of quest series that I can initiate, which will culminate in my... Am I headed the right direction? Vaguely. For Karen Amroth? I think I am. Um... There's got to be some quest sequence that will culminate in my getting an elf to string a rope across the river and letting me cross, right? Um, I, I um, was disappointed. I was disappointed not to find that. I mean, I understand they don't want to, you know, if they didn't want, it's not like they have to. It's not that it's an inaccuracy or anything like that. Um, it's, uh, do I want to go that way? No. Yeah. No, I don't want to go that way. Um, it was just a little bit of a disappointment. I, you know, I, I really did kind of want to cross that way. That wolverine is rabid? Seriously? There's rabies among the fauna of Lothlorien and the elves are okay with this? I'm disturbed. I am. I'm, I am, I am, dis I am disturbed that there would be rabies among the wolverines of Lothlorien. I thought upon the land of Lorien there was no stain. Does rabies not count as a stain? I mean, I suppose we were using the word rabid, perhaps metaphorically, rather than literally. But even that, you know, like, why should they be rabid? Shouldn't they be friendly? Or something? I mean... The only people who live in here are elves. Non-elves are not allowed to pass the borders of this land, so um, the only creatures in here are creature, like the only like humanoids that live here in the like memory of the species of wolverines would be those who don't molest them or kill them, right? Would they? Wouldn't the animals of Lothlorien have lost their instinctive distrust of you know humans? You'd think, right? Oh, Hologro is suggesting that the elves wouldn't even harm a virus. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe. Um. Anyway, hey there, Milwin. Hang on, Milwin. Before I forget, there's a stable master down here I really should speak with. Greetings to you. All right. Very good. Uh, Inurokhan. Oh, that's an interesting name. Okay. Hey, Milwyn. Welcome to Kareen Amroth. Thank you. You only have had the joy of seeing this place. 
in its fading times. <laughs> well, that was a strange place for, you know how they, they always do that with like the, especially in the Epic Quest line, right? Where the person, instead of saying a random, like, you know, won't you please help me or something like that, where they say a snippet of the quest text, which is often cool, but that one cut off in a really weird place. Um, uh, that you've only had the joy that you've had the joy of seeing this place she's commit like yeah do it again do it again Milwen. welcome to Kareen Amroth few only have had the joy of seeing this place oh few only have had the joy of seeing this place okay um uh, I, I I thought she said you only have had the joy of seeing this place well of course it goes on to say in these fading times which seemed a conspicuous place for her to cut off but the the few i miss the few okay right few only so i'm fortunate you're totally right i am absolutely fortunate to be here uh very grateful uh it's beauty a remnant only of the majesty it once held for on this mound amroth lord of lorien built his house in the days before his love was lost and he himself vanished from middle earth i know that's the nimmerdell story uh, it is said that when the south wind blows upon the hill, if you listen for the sound of the gulls, you might still hear Emroth calling, calling for his lost love, Nimrodel. Cool, but she never came back. That, that's not cool. Her not coming back is not cool. No one pauses a moment, but with a light laugh, she recovers herself. Don't look sad. Karen Emroth should be a reminder of happier days. Walk upon the grass and be joyful. Your sorrows will not follow you here. Excellent. A moment, friend, before you go. Okay. Know that I'm not the only hobbit that has come to Lorien in recent days. Oh, no way! In fact, I understand that you're known to these hobbits and their friends. Oh, hooray! We haven't seen the Fellowship since they left Lorien. And, of course, the Earth left Rivendell. And, of course, this is the place where you'd catch up with them, right? Because they spend a month in Lothlorien. Um, so, uh, absolutely. Boy, you guys have taken the easy road. I've been all the way through Moria. I mean, you guys took the direct road through Moria. I've been all up and down the joint, right? Um, oh boy, I hope that Aragorn doesn't yell at me, though, for leaving Eriador behind. I mean, after all, he kind of left Eriador to me, right? And here I am, uh, um, you know, sort of shamelessly following him into Rovanian. But anyway, okay, sorry. Frodo Baggins is resting with some members of his company on the crest of the hill. You don't know what Aaron has brought them to the Golden Wood. I know, it's like totally secret. And I can't tell you, Milwin, I'm sorry. I signed a non-disclosure with Elrond. I can't, I can't do it. Um... And I'm really good at being discreet and not revealing things for which I sign non-disclosure agreement. So, uh, sorry, Milwin. Um, yeah, I have been entrusted with the knowledge of it. Yeah, I didn't want to brag. Kind of did actually want to brag about that. Not going to lie. But, um, yeah, uh, but I'm sure they will be pleased to see me. I, I hope so. Maybe Frodo and I can have another epic stroll. A little heart-to-heart heart, heart -heart talk. Okay. Karen Amroth. I'm glad I've, I've come here in the day. Right? It's daylight. And bright sun, sure enough. I always thought elves were one for the stars, but this is more elvish than anything I ever heard tell of. I felt that I was inside a song. This is Sam, of course, on coming to Karen Emroth. Okay. Awesome. A great mallow on top of Karen Emroth. Can I see Dol Guldur from here? <clears throat> hey, you guys have any interesting quests for me? What do uh, the elves of Karen, uh, Karen Emroth do for quests? Greetings. If you have a moment, I have need of your assistance. Collect chalk? Seriously? For real? What do you need chalk for? Chalk and berries? Is this you're gonna make a a display? You're gonna you're gonna chalk Karen Amroth? Right? A little artistic graffiti? What's going on here? Okay. Gather some El some uh you're here to gather some of the uh the Eleanor, okay. Right, an extract of the juice from its stem and heart makes a marvelous golden yellow color. Okay. So you're an artist, and it's for dyes. Right. Okay. You know, uh, Manassiel, not sure I'm going to have time to go collect chalk for you. Um, 
but you know, if I find you it, aid the I'll collect cream? it. Let's see. Um, I am Melindathor, <clears throat> one of the wardens of the revered woodlands of Karen Amroth. I and my fellows have accepted the solemn charge of custodianship. Okay. We ensure that the forests are not thrown out of balance. A problem has come to my attention within the last few decades. A particular birch, the Malbrethil, has not been seen as often as in days past. And when it is sighted, the sapling seems spindly and overly delicate. I want you to find and examine some of these saplings that we might determine the cause of their malady. Okay, oh, oops. <laughs> I filled my quest swath. Hang on. I got so many quests and I'm not doing half of these anymore. Brewin quest? The treasures of Cardolan? Seriously? No, I think we're good. Yeah. Griffith's um, journeys have led him to accept a great deal more quests than really... Misty Mountains? What do I have from there? My dwarf friends talk to Glowin? Nah, we're good. We did talk to Glowin, and it was awesome, and everything. Trollshaws? Defeat Trollshaw? <laughs> we're good. Yeah. Yeah. No, defeat Hendrevile? No, we're fine. Yeah, it was fun and everything, but uh, defeats Bears? No. Defeat Hillman? No? Okay. I think we can definitely. Oh no, that one's tempting. Let's not let's not give that one up quite yet. Okay, we might come back to that one someday. All right, let's come again. Mount Brethil Sapling. Cause I kind of want to do this one. I mean, the Lord and Lady have need of your services. Forestry, right? Um, uh. We've got to help them with uh, uh, undergrown birch saplings. By all means. I mean, this is an emergency, right? The Malbrethil saplings are spindly, right? We can't have it, I tell you. It, it cannot be born. Spindly Malbrethil saplings, right? Oh, my goodness. Hey, yeah, guys. I wish a Gandalf were here. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. We're sad. Uh, yeah. Um, I found his hat. Um, yeah. And there was not as much water right under where he fell as I was kind of looking to find Frodo, got to tell you. So, but the Balrog died. So, um, hey. We have come such a long way, haven't we? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. You have come a long way, Frodo. When Millen told me another hobbit had come, you had no idea it would be me. I know, right? There's still a long way to go. But you found it difficult to worry too much about the road ahead. So true. I have to tell Sam what's happened since we parted. Oh, man, boy, where could I even start? Um, did you know, Frodo, I did the whole, I did all of Moria in one day, right? I went all the way from one side to the other. You took like three days, right? Grifflet did it in one sitting. So that was kind of fun. Um... Sam doesn't seem as surprised to see you as I am. You haven't become the chief conspirator of another conspiracy, have you, Sam? Oh, I love that. Of course, you, you know the reference, right? The reference, of course, is to a conspiracy on Mass, Chapter 4, 5 of The Hobbit, of The Fellowship of the Ring, right? Um, and counting titles now. No, it's, it's all good. Um, so uh, anyway, yeah, so when Sam was in the conspiracy with Merry and Pippin, but of course, that conspiracy was to prepare companions for his journey. So that's what he's suggesting, right? Um, he finds that when they get to Crick Hollow and he was planning to leave them all behind and go off on his own, they had formed a conspiracy uh, to come along with him and provide him with companions, right? So Frodo's reference here is to the fact that, uh, uh, you know, to the idea that we are provide that uh, maybe, maybe I'm in a conspiracy, maybe Griffith is in a conspiracy with, with Sam. Uh, to provide him another companion like we're joining the party. Love that. That's, that's, very, uh, that's very charming, Frodo. Hi, Sam. Hello there. Hey, what's up? Yeah, it's not like that at all. Um, 
Yeah, no, he's really not cut out for the keeping of secrets. It's just that so many queer things have happened to us already, and this place being so elvish and all, right? Yeah, Sam, I was just quoting what you were just saying to Sam a minute ago. <clears throat> I just about given up being surprised when something out of the ordinary happens. And here comes Grifflet, walking big as you please. Uh, you're right. No, the elves have definitely never had so many hobbits before. Four hobbits at one time. Five hobbits at one time. Um, yeah. I don't think Sam would say that he finds the elves funny, exactly. But anyway, you should find Mr. Merry somewhere around the hill, okay? I, I, um, um, he's taking one of his walks. All right. Let's go look for Merry. I hope he's with Pippin. Um, okay. Woohoo. Oh, I thought that was a skeleton. I thought that was like the rib cage of some ancient monstrous creature, but it's the roots of the Mowern tree. Of course. <laughs> Why? What kind of morbid assumptions am I making? Okay. Uh, what's with the streamers? I don't understand the streamers. What are they meant to be made out of? Cotton wool? Are they luminous? Do they shine in the dark? Is it light? Or is it... So is the, the white little balls... Are, are, are they little yet white balls of light? Or are they white puff balls of some other description? Oh, wait a second. I'm following the thing to the chalk. Hang on. Let's forget the stupid chalk. Excuse me. I don't mean to call it stupid. There, that's, yeah. Let's not do that. Um... Quest arrow had me herring off in the wrong direction entirely. Um, anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, because I want to find Mary and Pippin. I thought they were off in this direction. When I was going the other way, I'm like, this is not right. What's happening here? Okay. All right. Now we're clear. Um, again, if I find chalk, I'll pick it up. But uh, I'm not going to go chasing after chalk. Where's the Eleanor? I forgot to... Ch is that the gold color on the ground? Is that from the Eleanor that's in the grass? Yes, it is. Okay. So th those are the flowers that Sam's going to name his daughter after. Okay, cool. Aha! Uh -huh. Right next to the non-carcass of the non-monster is where they're going to be. Okay. Okay. All right. Bain Gwaloth, huh? Or Bain? Bain? Hmm. I did not think to run into you here. I, I can know. tell you that. It's awesome, isn't it, Mary? Uh, hi. Did I tell you about the filth? It was... Never mind. I have to admit, I didn't think to run into... Yeah, right. I'm on the wrong side of the mountains. I know, right? We all are. This is great. Uh, Pippin is around here somewhere taking a nap. Well, I can't... Oh, I don't want to wake him, but... We'll have plenty of time to catch up. Lothlorien is so peaceful, it's hard to remember how hard our road will be and has been. Okay, uh, I wonder if you might track down Boromir. He doesn't seem to be having as good a time here as the rest of us. I think he's impatient to get going. Yeah, it's probably just that, Mary. Yeah, I don't know what could be bothering Boromir. Where's Pippin? Is Pippin is Pippin sleeping? Hey, have you guys seen a, a a comatose hobbit? Yeah, I'm just looking. Send Thirwin and uh, Melui Bryn. Wait, Melui Melui Brenil. Melui Brenil. Okay, yeah. Sorry. So uh, I'm looking for a narcoleptic hobbit. I know I'm supposed to be finding Boromir, but. Um, where is he? Shouldn't Pippin be curled up around here somewhere? Oh, well. I don't see him. It's okay, Mary. 
Um, let's go find Boromir. And the reflecting pool, yes, of course. Okay, so Boromir. Is he shadowing Frodo? I see we're going back up the hill. That'd be interesting, right, if he were all, like, lurking around Frodo. Um, oh, man. We're almost done. How time flies when you're doing really fun things like visiting the heart of Elven to Mount Earth, catching up with the Fellowship of the Ring, collecting filth, right? I mean, who can keep track of time under those circumstances? All right. So, Boromir, of course, thinking about the Mythgard Academy Lord of the Rings classes now, you, uh, uh, as we were talking about them before, I um, reminds me of the discussion of Galadriel, which was my favorite part of the uh, Fellowship of the Ring class. Um, I kind of barely remember it because it was more than four years ago now that I recorded that, but... Um, but as I recall, that's when I really made uh, the strongest argument I had ever made um, about basically asking the question, like, what's up with Galadriel? What gives her the right to do what she did uh, to Boromir uh, and to the others? Um, when Boromir says he, he, she seems, it seems like she was tempting them, right? And Aragorn bristles right away, you know, speak no evil of the Lady Galadriel. And, like, I get it, you know. I mean, first of all, she's your grandmother-in-law, right? So, like, you know, whatever. But um, I don't believe Aragorn. That, you know, Aragorn says, Upon the land of Lorien there is no stain. Really? None? Everything is perfect there? Um, there is in her, that is in Goadrio, and in all this land, no evil, says Aragorn. Really? None at all? Gosh, how'd she end up banished from Valinor, then? Right? Um, how is it that she admitted to being so tempted by the ring and tempted not only to take it when it was offered to her, but tempted to find it, to get it? Long has she desired that which he, Frodo's going to ask her, right? To have the ring. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's, I think Aragorn's not 100% right, and Boromir's not 100% wrong. Um, but anyway, Boromir. Nice cloak. It's sort of a simple travel cloak, but I, I like it. Is that a, meant to be like a hood that's down? or? Yeah. Any recommendations, Boromir, I can make to the elves on guard? Can, do you think they could be doing their job better? It is most strange to see you here. Has Eriador been made safe already? Oh! Oh, I'm wounded, Boromir. Oh, what a, a barbed shaft which goes home. As a matter of fact, yes. Yes, it is. I made Eriador safe entirely. I finished the Volume 1 questline, FYI, Boromir, and defeated uh, the... the uh, defeated the, the false king, right, Mordorith, which, by the way, Boromir, did you hear who that really was? Aarnor, last king of Gondor? I mean... Right, um, but I took him down, the wraithified last king of Gondor. Um, no offense to Gondor or anything, but they were totally messing it up in the north. So yeah, I handled the stuff, Boromir. What have you been up to? I want to know. Okay, oh, you're apologizing. That's okay. All right, fine. Bygones, Boromir. Bygones. Uh, my words were born of frustration, not of dislike. Every hour we spend in idleness is an hour during which the shadow draws closer to my city. Oh, you just want to leave, right? You're an, you've seen little of Aragorn and even less of Gimli. The dwarf seems to have gotten over his distrust of distrust of elves easily enough. So you're criticizing Gimli for no longer distrusting the elves? Okay, right? Even now he's off with Legolas. Okay, I'll go speak to Gimli. All right. Well, Boromir, you stay aloof over here, I guess, and look at Karen Amroth from a distance as that seems to be the thing that you're doing over here. You can't even see from here. You're just staring into the canopy, watching the path, inspecting the approach. Um, okay. 
All right. Off we go, safe falling and sliding our way down the precipice over which Boromir is looking. Itself, like an emblem of that which is to come, there is Boromir on the edge of a precipice looking down, having distanced himself from the party, right, staring moodily off at them in the distance, reflecting on not only the physical distance that he has placed between himself and his companions, but upon the figurative distance that is among them as well, right, as he... Uh, detaches himself more and more and begins to entertain thoughts which he had scarcely ever entertained openly before. Um, remember, Sam is going to say that he thinks that it was in Lorien that Boromir first saw clearly uh, that which he... Uh, that which Sam guessed sooner. Okay. I would rather be below the ground than so far above it. Yeah, yeah, I get my little surprise to find you here. By Durin's beard, I did not expect to see you again so soon. I know, everyone keeps implying that I'm come too quickly behind you. But yeah, no, it's just how diligent I am and how fast I move, right? You know, I Griff is like a leaf in the wind, came away. Can't stop him. You're glad to be surprised. Very good. Yeah, Legos has been showing me the woods of Lothlorien and the majesty of these trees, so like to stone-carved pillars beneath the mountains. <clears throat> Fabulous. Fills this dwarf with amazement. But even in a land of marvels, its lady is the greatest one of all. That is fabulous. Of course, we know that the halls of the Elven King and Mirkwood were, were, were built partially by the dwarves, and that the lines describing Moria... Uh, in the song that Gimli sings were originally in a poem that Tolkien wrote describing uh, Thranduil's halls, the Elven King's halls under the, uh, uh, under the forest. So, so there's some, there's some long, but, but do you see what Gimli just did, right? Some of the, the pillars of stone underneath are, are, you know, in, 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 in the Elven King's halls are carved to look like trees, right? So he's looking around at the, at the Malarn trees and he's like, these are awesome. They remind me of the pillars. <laughs> so like to Gimli, stone carving into the shape of a tree is the is the form. And the Malorn tree is the shadow. Right? That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, okay. All right. Um, let's see. Legos has been shown. All right. Okay. So you're ready to return to the ground. The trees are better admired from below than up among their branches. We are just about to search for more patrolling orcs. Oh. Why not come with us? Hey, I'd love to. Maybe next week, though. I'm going to have to postpone that, Gimli, so uh, ask me again next week, and we'll do all... And I'll talk to Legolas, right? What do I think? Is there some room in our party for a third? Hey, me, Gimli, Legolas, three musketeers, that'll be awesome. Uh, the possibility of hewing an orc or three would only sweeten the appeal of such a tour. Okay. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, okay, so Legos, I'll join you next time because that, 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 that would be fun. Also, Legos, I don't want to alarm you, but there's, um, there's, there's birch trees, right? There's Malbrethel saplings that are spindly, right? So uh, this, is a, this is a thing that also needs to be addressed very seriously so uh, uh, the, so the spindly Malbrethel sapling crisis and the uh, uh, the 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 go on a go on a buddy mission with Legos and Gimli that sounds that sounds really fun so who's this all right tune in next time when Grifflet looks up at this statue and says who's this um, okay so I, I gotta go but uh, uh, thanks everybody for joining me today and uh, Griffith will be here with Legos and Gimli next time, and uh, we'll do we'll do we'll do lots more fun stuff. Um, we'll we'll go adventuring with Legos and Gimli. We'll meet Galadriel and Caliborn. We'll um, I mean again, not just like be teleported there, but actually find their flat, which is cool. And we'll um, maybe we'll do that next time. I think. Um, and of course, we will once and for all address the great. Uh, spindly malbrethel sapling crisis um so that'll be excellent 
Anyway, thanks everybody for joining me, and I will see you guys next Friday. Next Friday, of course, is the day after American Thanksgiving, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be available then. Not shopping. I shan't be doing any shopping. I make a point of not doing that at all. So um, I'll, I, should, I should be here next Friday. Thanks, everybody, and uh, have a good weekend coming up, and I will see you guys next week. Bye now.